Hi, welcome back to another episode. Um, we're going to be taking a look at some more Unity assets today. This first one we're taking a look at is called Mesh Slicer. Um, this is also included in um, the October 2021 Mega Bundle Fill Your Toolbox sale. Um, normal price for Mesh Slicer is uh, $70, but you can get it in the Mega Sale um, as long as you spend up to 45 bucks, I think. Um, but you might be watching this after the Mega Sale is over. Um, so let's take a look at Mesh Slicer and see what it's all about. Um, looking at its documentation, there's two big important pieces. So there's the knife slicer um, script. This is the objects that you want to slice with the knife, so like an apple. And then you have the knife, which you put on an object that you want to slice with. So based on those um, two pieces of information, um, if I go to this test async demo scene um, and I hit play, you can see that these tables will fall to the ground. All right, let's take a look at these tables. So we have this table here, um, and it's got the object slicer sample script on it, and it's got the knife sliceable async script on it. Um, it's got the BZ smooth depenetration script. It's also got a rigid body. Okay, so um, in the sample scene, you just use it like a typical first person controller, except you can fly in the air. Come up to it, and they also have this little fake knife thing. Um, it's got the slicer script on it, the BZ knife. It's just got a capsule collider. It's just a really skinny capsule. I mean, if you look at the transform, it's just a capsule that's been scaled down. All right, so, um, I mean, look, I can come up here and there's the knife and boom, it just hit the table and it sliced it. So what happens is, um, if we come into this table, um, let's focus in, all right? So if we come to this table, okay, it's now been sliced into many pieces. I guess they have, oh, there's a top and then there's the legs, okay? Um, so here we have the top and then we have the legs. I'm not sure, what is this piece then? Oh, it created a separate game object for when you slice it. Okay, cool. Um, so on this table, it's got the object slicer sample. And what this does is um, it lets you decide what it's gonna look like when you slice it. What material do you want to appear um, whenever you slice on those faces. And then in, you have the sliceable script on it. All right, so we can come over here to this other one and we can slice this table as well. Okay, so um, let's just see if we can mimic that. Um, I'm just going to uh, ignore those objects. In fact, I will just go do that. Bye-bye sliceables and bye-bye knife. Let's see if we can do this on our own. Okay, so here I'm in the scene. And let's create a 3D object and let's make a uh, sphere. All right, what type of materials do I have in here? I don't know. Um, there's my crazy profile image. Maybe we can use that as a, a material. I think I put it in here somewhere. Boop. Nope, it's not happy with that because um, the shader's missing. All right, let's go to standard. There we go. And there's my ugly mug. Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, let's go back to my um, transparent. There it is. Cool. <laughs> it's a transparent sphere with my big ugly mug on it. Nice. Um, we could probably do some tiling, maybe? Uh, no, up here. Tiling? Yeah, get my get my face. It's a Philip Peach beach ball going on. Yeah, there we go. All right, so that can be that can be what we're slicing. Uh, all right, so here's our fear, and I'm just gonna call it to slice so I don't lose it. Um, so <clears throat> I would imagine now that we just add some components onto it. So let's go look at the table. It's got object slicer sample on it. Um, we could just mimic what this table has, which it has knife sliceable async and object slicer sample. So let's just put knife sliceable async on it and see what it does. Okay. Um, we also probably want a rigid body on it. Okay, so let's uh, let's move our sphere. Let's just go whoop. And let, if it, we hit play, it should just fall to the ground. There it goes, fell to the ground, cool. Okay, so if that's all we have, I mean, we could create our own knife. So what the knife has on it is just the BZ knife script. It also has a rigid body. Um, 
but we need, we're going to add some scripting. Let's just steal this knife. Let's just steal that knife. Let's just do that. We're going to leave the knife on. Because I don't want to recode the knife, but it's got the knife script. Um, yeah, so let's just, uh, let's just hit play now. And there's our little ball. All right, so we're still moving around. So now if I come up to the ball and I slice it, slice, 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 nothing's happening. Okay, so we did not add everything that the tables did. So let's see what we're missing. So maybe um, let's just add now the object slicer sample. Object slicer sample. Okay, we got that on there now. And so now we probably need a material there. Um, what other materials we got going on here? Um, I don't see any there. Let's see if this one's got a material. It probably does. Samples. There's some materials. There, we'll put some grass inside it. So uh, sphere to slice. We have our object slicer sample. Let's put some grass in there. All right, let's hit play. All right, fly on into the ball again. Slicey, boom, and now we have a slice. Uh, all right, um, it, it didn't separate, but it is adding the slices, and now we have different pieces. There we go. So I wonder if it's just, they're just, it's getting stuck to each other, but the pieces are there. It is slicing, but it's such a clean slice. It's not making it fall off of itself. So maybe that's why they don't use any spheres in the examples. All right. That's pretty fun though. That's pretty fun. All right. So pretty easy to set up. So even if you don't understand the documentation completely and how to set it up, it seems pretty straightforward. 70 bucks. I don't know that I would ever pull the trigger on this unless I just had a game that I absolutely needed slicing. Um, one thing it also has is it does let you slice characters as well. So we can take a look at that. Um, so if we go into the character slicer sample scene, which we're just going to use the sample scene. Because um, they spawn a character that just runs around. Um, you, you have to have like a ragdoll on it too. Um, but they consider this beta slice. Um, because you can't have like more than two or something. And if you slice the same character more than once, it really freaks out according to the documentation. But there you go. You could technically slice characters. And of course, the animator will quit. Um, the ragdoll makes it flop around. So good times. All right. So that was Mesh Slicer. Um, pretty cool asset. Again, I probably would never pull the trigger for 70 bucks for this unless I just, I, I just can't think of any reason I would need it. Think about how much time you would pay yourself per hour. Think about that value and how many hours you would take building this asset. Um, for me, I'm sure it would take me 5, 10, 15, 20, a lot of hours. So um, I, if I needed this, I would totally buy it. All right, let's take a look at uh, another asset. This one's called Digger Pro, 90 bucks. Um, there's also another asset just called Digger um, that allows you to do what I'm about to show you um, as well, except the difference between Digger and Digger Pro is that Digger is used for like creating your scenes, but Digger Pro allows you to um, dig at runtime. Um, so if you haven't seen Digger Pro before, um, it's pretty straightforward. You can dig inside your terrain. All right, so this is what we're going to take a look at. Let's see how easy it is to do. All right, so we're getting some console errors here. So we have HDRP. It couldn't open the include file for that. Um, and then we have the URP train lit. So we're, we are using URP. Um, so I think to fix this console error, it's something mentioned in the documentation. Where did I see it at? Um, so you, if you're using URP 10 plus, you have to import the digger URP 10 UD package file that can be used in this. And I think I'm using 10 plus. I, I how, how, how do I know? <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's go to window package manager, um, in project universal render by. Yeah. Okay. So we're using it above 10. All right. So we need to follow the documentation steps to where to go. Assets, digger shaders. Cool. All right, so let's go project, digger, shaders, digger URP. All right, so we import this bad boy. 
All right. Um, still get, uh, let's, let's hit clear. Okay. So it doesn't care about those IRs right now. All right. Nothing that's going to keep us from moving on. So I'm going to go in and let's take a look at the demo. Uh, so here we have simple scene. We don't need to save that one. All right. Here we are. Oops. So let's see here. Scene view. We have a nice terrain up here. Let's go a little bit faster. Right click, scroll wheel. All right. So um, here's our terrain. Uh, I click on this. You can see that it is a terrain. It's got a terrain collider. So it's got this nice little readme here. That's cool. Um, to start digging in the terrain, go to the menu, tools, digger, and then click on setup terrains. All right. So um, tools, digger, setup terrains. Okay. We already took care of that. All right, so I imagine our terrains are now set up. Then select the digger master object in the scene and click on the terrain to dig. Digger master, cool. Okay, all right. Um, you can change brush, opacity, and texture. You can also enable real-time in-game editing by setting that up. We'll try that too. You can also enable in-game nav mesh updating. Whoa, that's why this is $90. <laughs> um, all right, so let's try just um, going to digger master. And I don't know, do, let's, let's, let's dig, uh, let's go Sandy dig. Okay. And here we go. Noise. We're digging. All right. Let's see what that depth looks like. All right. So there we go. We've dug into the mesh a bit. Um, it's digging. We can go depth, depth zero. So what happens if I go like that? Bit deeper, maybe. All right. I'm not sure what opacity is. Let's put opacity to one. I can look at the documentation and see what that is. We could also do uh, half sphere, rounded cube. What's a stalagmite? Ooh, neat. That would be for inside of caves, right? Um, let's see what a rounded cube looks like. Bonk. Cool. All right, this is sweet. Um, let's see what it's like. Oh, you can really see how deep that went now when I come up here like this. All right, let's see what it's like at um, runtime. So it's going to be a little shady because um, even if we didn't set, like I could hit play now and I could still dig. Um, oh, no, terrain cannot be edited by digger while playing. Okay. Um, so now let's go to the terrain. I guess we don't have to need to click that. Let's go tools, digger, set up for runtime. So now we have the Digger Master runtime. So we hit play. And um, so we're here. What's our camera looking at? Something like right here. So how do we, we want to go to Digger Master runtime. Oh, so we, we would need to call that method from the scripts. We don't really have a way to, oh no, there it's, it's digging. Maximize. Yeah, so we're we're kind of digging. It's having a hard time keep keep check, catch, catching up. Um, I'm not sure what where it's digging from, but you can see we are digging at runtime. All right, cool. So this is pretty straightforward app. I'm not going to dig any deeper to this because I feel like you can kind of see um, how it works. So yeah, that's Digger Pro. Um. There's also, just for fun, let's look up uh, the non-pro version. All right, so Digger is 60 bucks. So if you just want something to help you build terrains and overhangs and whatnot, I um, mean, get it for 60 bucks. Um, I'm kind of surprised that Unity's terrain doesn't let you do that by itself, but I don't ever use terrains. I do a lot more low poly stuff, so I'm not dealing with Unity's terrains. Um, but yeah, Digger Pro, I could totally see um, uses for that. Um, pretty sweet. Um, all right, let's take a look at another app. All right, this next one we're looking at is Space Graphics Toolkit. Easily the highest price point item probably that I own from the asset store. Um, this is a lot of art and it's customizable. Um, this goes above and beyond what I would even ever attempt to do in a game. I just wouldn't even think about it. But if you want a hyper realistic space environment for your project, um, this can do that. Um, now, maybe this spaceship's not super hyper-realistic, but the flames flames are pretty nice. Um, 
this game has a five star rating. Like the only ones that aren't five star are like from three or four years ago. Um, but this is an amazing looking asset. I don't know how I would use this or when I would use this, but let's just take a look at the demo scene and some of the settings that we can do. Um, it's got good documentation too. You can get the docs from here. There's also videos on YouTube that show you how to use everything. Um, with an investment like this, I mean, I would be reading through the documentation, watching every video. Um, so um, I just looked at the, what are the examples included? And there's just, there's so much you can do in this. All right, so let's look in the scene. Um, first thing, whenever you import um, Space Graphics Toolkit, go to the folder, you can click on guide. And it's got a nice little setup and guide to talk about it. Um, let's go into, I don't know, um, basic pack. Okay, so there's a lot of different scenes in here. It's weird that they put them in packs. There's all the features, so there's flares. They're all, so they have lots of demo scenes in here. Let's just go to the packs, the basic pack. I don't know, what should we look at? Um, VR stars. I'd be interested in looking at that. I do a lot of VR stuff. Um, let's go to an asteroid belt, though. Oh, nice. So how do we look at this in the scene view? Okay, so there it is over there. So it's using a skybox on the camera, possibly. Let's look at the camera. Um, let's look at. Uh, let's let's just hit play. And let's just take a look at this. All right. So Q and E to roll. W A S D arrows. Click and drag to look. All right, so cool, cool. Oh boy, that's fast movement. Yeah, look at that. Let's maximize this. That's pretty sweet. Boy, that moves fast. We can roll noise. Oh, cool. Oh, great. That's we can go ahead and jump to the. Oh, that's not the scene I wanted. <laughs> that was set up where you can bounce from scene to scene. But let's go look at our build settings. Yeah, we don't have any other scenes in there. Yeah, so that's not going to work. Um, let's look at what is Continuum. All right, let's maximize this. It's interesting. So we can just look around here and not fly through this one. All right, if I click Previous Scene, yeah, it's just going back to that. All right. Um, what's an obsession? Let's go to a nebula. I want to see a nebula. Eh, not quite what I was hoping for a nebula. Let's hit play and see what it looks like. All right, let's maximize. This says this shows you how to make a nebula scene by combining the Starfield Nebula, Billboard, Backdrop features. Okay. Are we just not inside it yet? I don't know. Maybe I watched too much Star Trek. I was hoping for more like. And this is still pretty dang cool. I'm having a lot of fun with this. All right, so what if I unmaximize that? Um, let's uh, let's let's roll back over. Making anybody seasick yet? All right, so let's see what type of options we have in here. Let's go to the hierarchy. Let's look at the nebula. We have our Starfield Nebula clouds. Um, so it looks like it's some type of billboard. What can we do here? Let's let's amp our threshold up. Do we notice anything different? Not really. What about samples. Yeah, you can see the samples is adjusting what it looks like. There we go. We can see that moving around in there. Lots of customization. So this is like the whole cloud-like feel. That's what I would want more. That's more of a nebula feel for me. I don't want to be able to see through it. But horizontal power. What's that do? I'm digging that. Yeah, I might crank that up even more. Horizontal brightness? Nah, that's too much. Now what if I change some other things? So that's changing the size. It seems to really more more move it around than change the size. What did I just do? I, I jacked something up. Um, Columns? Some type of grid? Oh, I see that. Okay. So if we bump that up to 15 and this one up to 15? Yeah, I don't like that. One was definitely better. <laughs> just the way that it's laid out. Cool. All right, so we can also change the color. What if I wanted to go with a more of a pink? Oh, yeah, that's good stuff right there. All right, let's maximize. Let's see what we did. Now, that's a nebula. That's what I want for a nebula. Yeah. I don't know what that other stuff was, but this is what I would do for a nebula. That's cool. <laughs> nice. Very much dig that. 
All right, let's try to uh, edit something that's not a nebula. We're, Philip, we're not learning anything. You're just having fun. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Oh, what's an obsidian planet? Okay, so this shows you how the Earth-sized planet demo scene can be modified to create a different style planet. All right, let's hit play. Okay, so we can, um, oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> oh. Wow, I'm digging that. What if we come now to, what are we gonna do? The planet, terrain. We can change the detail. I don't even know if we're gonna be able to notice anything different with that detail. I'm not noticing anything. Oh, nope, it changed. It just took a while to update. Um, atmosphere, we can change the color of the atmosphere to make it more of a green. Oh, that's sick. Um, what about the light? What's this light doing for us? Um, pink. Did that do anything? Yeah, I don't think that did anything. Um, that's cool. That's cool. But the planet... What's the seed do? <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, what's the seed do? I don't know that it's doing anything. Random, this is probably a randomized button. Yeah. Let's set that back to one. I don't know what that was doing. All right, so let's check a look at the planet terrain. Um, so there's a radius. So what's what's that do? What if I set this for 100? Okay, so that's me. <laughs> There's basically no terrain now. Now, it's, is it going to redraw the terrain that I jacked it up? Um, there's the terrain resolution. Uh, let's unplay it and fix this. All right, cool. Go back in. <clears throat> so it's using a material for the planet. So let's see what other type of planets we can do. Um, let's just search planet. Let's see what other materials they already have set up. So we're looking for a material, 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 material. Um, let's drop this one in there. Yeah, cool. So there's all sorts of different planets. I thought I saw one that said like Earth. There's Earth sized. That's a texture. Um, this is pretty cool. Let's look at one more thing. What did I see that I wanted to look into? Ooh, a storm planet. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted. I, I now know what I wanted to look at. Let's go ahead and hit play anyways. I want to see this. It shows you how to use the star lighting spawner. You can procedurally draw. Oh, that's neat. You see lightning around the planet. Oh, look, we're on the dark side of the planet. That is so cool. My goodness, that's amazing. All right, the last thing I want to talk about or look at is... Um, Planet surfing, because I wanted to see what it is, because there was a great review that said one of the coolest thing was planet surfing. So let's take a look at planet surfing. All right, maximize that. Hit play. This shows you how the terrain object component can be used to keep an object glued to the surface of a planet. This object can then be moved around using the thruster features. Um, okay. So our, our ship is a bit oddly shaped. <laughs> All right, let's turn around. There you go. All right, that's now I see how cool that is. Well, you can make yourself a, a pod racing game with this. <laughs> Keeps you glued to the terrain. That's awesome. I imagine you could also. So we're looking for the sergeant terrain component. There's the sergeant thruster controls. So where's the component on? Is it the sergeant floating object? I don't know why I keep calling it sergeant, but use the sergeant train object. Okay, here. So we can do offset of one, radius five. So offset, is that how, yeah, how far off the surface? All right, there we go. All right, but you can see there's a lot you can do with this. I'm sure you would want to take a look at the documentation watch a lot of the videos but this is a very 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 powerful tool and that planet surfing is pretty sweet all right um well i think that was three assets for this video um i'm gonna get it in and publish don't forget to like comment subscribe check out my patreon page check out my itch page for assets i have um and we'll see you next time